I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're taking a deep dive into a terrific book called Dark Heat, a Sarah and Janet and Mystery. It's written by a wonderful author. His name is Tom Riley. It is a thrilling blend of detective work and climate crisis narrative. Set in a near future ravaged by climate change, Sarah and her AI partner, Janet N., transition from mundane research tasks to high stakes investigation following the disappearance of a friend entangled with a black market gang. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank our team at Bookside Press for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his terrific page turner of a book. The links are below this interview. Tom, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Uh, thank you for having me. I love all the elements in this book, the old film noir elements, the AI futuristic elements. It's such a great idea to have, you know, an investigator and her partner be an AI. Tell us a little bit about the inspiration. Uh, I, I, I retired from NASA about uh, night. Uh, 2014, mm -hmm. and was teaching, coaching young people in STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Mm -hmm. And it became, I started out with a small uh, space type operation. Uh, and then it became very clear that we, I had to do something to deal with climate change. Space is going to have to be put off until after we deal with it. And they, I started with what do I owe them? What should they, what will, do they need? And the answer is a vision of reliable stuff, people, uh, characters they can believe in, in action on real problems. None of this gloom and doom, none of this rainbows and unicorns right down the middle of the road. And the middle of the road looks a lot like the Great Depression, but we survived the Great Depression. It's not the end of society. It is not some golden age. We've got to work through this and we've got to give our young people the stories they need to get through it. Right. So this is part entertainment, an enjoyable story to read, a thriller, but it's also a wake up call that our environment, our earth, our planet, our atmosphere are all in danger, right? Yes, in danger, but it, the problem is not unsolvable. The problem requires work. The whole thing we need is to get large numbers of people in effective action. And you can do that with stories mm -hmm. much better than you can do it with threats and anger and all this sort of nonsense. Exactly. Yeah, it's easier to persuade through storytelling than to try to force something down somebody's throat. Uh, it's better for them to see it intertwined in literature. And they're like, my goodness, is that what the future is going to be like? Sci-fi has always predicted the future quite accurately, it seems. So I think uh, you're well on your way there to being prophetic. And hopefully it does prompt some changes. Give the folks at home an overview of what your story is about. All right. Uh, said about 15 years in the future, mm -hmm. we have a young Afro-American woman named Sarah, with an H, and she has partnered up in an earlier story that's, that's covered how that happened, with an AI, and she wants to be a classical detective, uh, in, a private investigator. But that's really hard to break into. At the time of the story, she's had a couple of good cases and then a whole lot of really boring investigational stuff for corporations mm -hmm. and so forth. Then uh, she she buys a few sacks of potatoes. Money, uh, food is, you really have to deal with it in this mm. vision uh, from a shifty kind of guy who you, what one time was her lover, but that was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. He wasn't trustworthy. <laughs> She's buying it. She goes out in the middle, the two of them go out in the middle of the night and there's a, uh, a, railroad car with a door open and a, a guy is taking sacks of potatoes out and there's a long line of electric vehicles and he's putting looking at his phone to see who's bought putting in 
they were expecting it to be their friend Randy, but it isn't. And so from that point on, the questions are, what happened to Randy? Mm -hmm. Randy was not one not to be in charge of his deal out there selling those potatoes. And the uh, and it turns out that he had a run-in with a black market. He was crump crumping, crimping their style mm -hmm. and uh, uh, vanished. Was And consequently, so our team goes and talks to his parents mm -hmm. and specifically his father. His mother is just hysterical. And from there on, they start looking for him. They find out that a large shipment of grain has been hijacked that was intended to go over to seas to keep people from starving, but now, and was insured so that the insurance company has put a big bounty on it mm. who to get it back or to find out who did it. And that would be a whole year's salary for the two of them. And it's a real case for them. And they think they're related. And it turns out the two, the disappearance and the grain heist, it turns out, yeah, it was the same gang that did both. And they spend uh, several months in looking out, uh, going through the, the what you what we expect to happen in climate crisis to run down this situation. The black market gang has a lot of friends because they don't want that food sent overseas, mm -hmm. but they also are killing people far away. And so we have a big ethical uh, concerns about that. And then, of course, it being a murder mystery, they, they just get into a big uh, night of checking, uh, steel, sneaking, sneaking around and getting samples of grain and stuff like that. Well, I think all the multi layers is what makes the book so interesting. It's got a great, lot of great elements. You've got a female private investigator. You've got an AR partner. You've got a classic bad guy. You've got food insecurity abounding. You've got climate change that has made our planet an inhospitable place in many ways. Have you envisioned this story as a movie or a series, perhaps? It was written specifically with the two earlier books to be a um, open TV series because that's what's zoom you know what's hot right now but that's really hard to break into that sure. uh, industry boy they got that one locked up tight so mm -hmm. we we got a lot of work to do to even get considered well you got the work out there now so it could wind up in anyone's hands so netflix amazon prime hulu you know peacock if you're listening this would be a great series what are the names of the other two books that preceded this uh the a Climate of Revenge is a detective story uh, about uh, a uh, executive for an oil company who turns who turncoats and uh, goes to Congress with his, his story and is then later killed by somebody. And we got to, you know, who? What's the ethics on that one? Mm -hmm. And the previous one was Born to Storms, and that's the uh, young adult how this all got started. How did this young woman hook up with this expensive AI mm -hmm. uh, to become this partnership? Wonderful, wonderful. Is there a fourth installment coming? Uh, this summer, uh, these books are written with a team, including young people. Mm -hmm. The young people become available during the summer. So we're proposing another book for the summer and we're now trying to work out what's the plot and who's the villain. Villains are very hard to choose. Exactly. Yeah. And you're gonna if you're gonna have a strong protagonist, you need an equally strong, if not stronger, antagonist. That is the secret to great writing. I think you've tapped into that with Dark Heat for sure. We were talking before we began recording about Miralago, President Trump's estate in Florida. Uh, you have a dire prediction about that, right? Uh, in writing the novel, I have to build up the uh, environment of the story, and it's set 15 years in the future. How bad is climate crisis going to be? How will it affect pe real people's lives? One of the things that affects strongly is uh, where you live and mm -hmm. where you can live. And uh, uh, 
consequently, I did a lot of research on how the rising sea level will affect uh, uh, the pro properties and where those problems are bad and where they can be ignored. One of the places where you can't ignore it is Southern Florida. Hmm. Now, a little slow rise like that isn't, doesn't take the building out. What it does is makes it harder and harder to actually run it as a business. The first thing that goes is insurance. We already have terrible problems insuring anything in, in Southern Florida. Mm -hmm. Then you lose things like the roads uh, a few days a month. You can you, you know, does that wipe your business out? Right. And slowly, inch by inch. And so, so it's, it's a death by a thousand cuts. So the question is, when will a hit up the side of the head force you to take a, a, a look at it and stop the denial? Yep. And we have a, 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 on climate change and particularly ocean level rise, we have one of those events. It's called the lunar node. These tides, which are very critical of how much damage Earth uh, sea level rise does, mm -hmm are in two major cycles, one by the set by the gravity of the sun, the other set by the gravity of the moon. About every 90 years, they line up. Then you have one big cycle. Mm -hmm. This is called the lunar node. And if with that large extra tide, which is only a few extra inches, you get big storms, which is exactly what we expect in climate crisis, then you get a historic event that knocks people up the side of the head and says, you've got to do something. Yeah. And that is what is expected. The next lunar load alignment is 2034. I expect a big storms sometime in a couple of year period there to hit Southern Florida. Then you get hit up. That's the hit up the side of the head. Away go any insurance. Away goes any banking that would want to give you a loan. Mm -hmm. uh, you lose the water. Uh, you don't have water anymore. You don't have roads are beaten yeah. up and so forth. It's a domino effect, no doubt. It's, it's a Wait. domino effect. Yeah. It, the building's still sitting there. Right. The tide's only up, a, uh, you know, a few meters. It, right. you know, you it, it probably will da wipe out the golf course, but the building's uh, got several meters of altitude. Right. But you can't run it as a, ho a mo hotel. A lot of well, hopefully by climate change, knocking at the doors of Mar-a-Lago, knocking at the doors of Joe Biden's estate in Delaware, the message will get across that change needs to happen before we are consumed by it. The name and of the book that, is... And, and that will, de will de destroy the market. Yeah. Absolutely. And the zero dollars for Mar-a-Lago about 2035. Yeah. Well, hopefully things change between now and then. Uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Uh, taking action now will help ameliorate some of the issues of climate change, no doubt. But we need to act today. This book is a wake-up call. It's called Dark Heat. It is a Sarah and Janet and Mystery. It's written by Tom Riley. It's a great, thrilling novel. It's a classic detective story, but has some modern elements infused into it, including an AI partner and a world that is falling apart, at least in part, due to climate change. It's a great read. You'll love it. Highly recommended. Tom, thanks so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you. Thanks for your time. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.